Three, two, one. Hi everyone, I'm Kathy Hobbs, owner of Kathy Hobbs Design Recipes, an interior design and home staging company based in New York City. But before that, I was a newscaster, mostly in New York, and welcome to The Real, where I help people harness the power of video, and we always have a special guest. And today's guest is Vinny Potestivo. He is truly a man in the know. He is an industry insider. He has worked in various aspects of television from being a casting director, producer, and content creator. These days, you can find Vinny mostly helping personalities and entrepreneurs become bona fide brands and household names. Let's take a look at Vinny Potestivo, this industry a-lister. Vinny Pastivo, everybody. Welcome. Vinny is, you guys, I mean, this is a real treat, an absolute industry A-lister. Vinny and I first met because he had considered me and my family for one of his reality shows. It was about a mom, a busy mom, uh, who had a baby and was juggling a career. I didn't get cast on that show, but I got cast on HGTV Design Star. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about your background. Tell us who you are and what you do. Oh, you are awesome. It is so great to share your energy and thank you for having me on this today. Um, and to see that real is kind of like even uh, reminding me of what I do, um, which hopefully is just bring a smile to people's faces. It was great to see so many faces on that in that reel up there that I love so much. Um, uh, I, yeah, by trade, uh, a casting director in the late 90s, uh, I was at um, Fox News and the TV Food Network and then MTV News and then MTV and stayed there for 10 years and got to be a big part of their programming boom of reality TV before I started my agency in 2007. So uh, where I still do the same thing that I think all casting directors inherently really do do, but they don't get paid for it, which is nurture talent and build relationships with them so that if it doesn't, it usually doesn't work on the first meeting. It usually takes a couple, a couple so we can go back and, and the, the producer trusts us that we trust the talent as well. So um, I'm excited to talk about what we uh, have in store to talk about today. I think what's interesting is there was a time in the early days of reality TV where it was an absolute ticket to stardom. I remember when I was working uh, at WPIX in New York City, we'd be on the red carpet, all of the reporters, and someone would come down and tell us who was coming up next on the red carpet. And we would look at each other and say, who? She was on season one of Survivor. She was on season one of, and we're like, oh, okay. And literally being a contestant, you didn't even need to win, was an instant ticket to reality TV and stardom. Do you think that that's still the case? That just being a, on a reality TV show is an is is a, is still a springboard to launching a brand. Um, that's a great question. I think that being that being part of co um, original content can certainly um, springboard the brand, and it could still happen on television. It's just a matter of I think where the where the numbers are, where the where the audience is, the mass of the audience. Um, Back in the day, there wasn't social media. We weren't competing. And, and I don't say I compete with Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, 
Clubhouse. I compete with all of Macy's and Samsung on TikTok and Facebook. And so all of that competition was not around when we, when we were growing, when we were growing into this industry. So a hundred percent reality TV was a launch pad and one of the surefire ways to launch a celebrity career, uh, celebrities other than writing songs autobiographically, or maybe coming out with a book, there was no place to have ownership of story. So, um, uh, and in a, a lot of ways, comedians and songwriters were like the first, in my opinion, the first real talent brands that had to wake up, create their own stuff. Otherwise, the paycheck wasn't coming. Like the idea of creating content and then getting paid seems so normal to us now in 2020. But to you and I in 2000, we'd be like, what? I'm not, how do you get? <laughs> you know, it's funny that you bring up uh, comedians because, you know, I grew up and I'm really dating myself now, you know, during the days of um, Richard Pryor. Yeah. And uh, Gene Wilder, and then later on, uh, it was Eddie Murphy and Chris Rock, and you know people like Andrew Dice Clay. When I was, you know, in 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 college, even or after, and they each almost had a shtick that they were known for, uh, you know, in in their sketch, you know, comedy routine. So we talk about branding, and so as a big part of it coming up with really what is your platform? Because if you don't have one, it's really hard whether you're on a reality TV show or not, or even if you get your own show to really have tentacles and really take it to the next level. Yeah, um, well, by the way, the shtick is the brand. That's like the funny part, right? So we we didn't have this word, the brand in, in Webster's, by the way, in the same book that probably didn't have internet or you know a bunch of other sort of modern words that have, have you know emerged since. So it's interesting to think, um, I've got in my head about this for a second because yeah, yeah. I've never been asked that question before. And I'm realizing that Richard Pryor and those people that you're talking about, the talent brand, their shtick was so strong that even in the films that they were actors in, and I would legitimately call some of those people actors in, in addition to comedians, they really truly do have an, the acting craft down. They brought their brand to that character. So when we talk about, oh, he's the same person in every role, you know, like there's certain comedians or actors that are the same person in every single movie. It's just it's different words, different name, but you know, they're not even trying to act. They're just, we say maybe they have the great personality or that shtick, that the way they do that one thing that they do. The platform to me becomes the experience. Um, so my shtick is, you know, helping people. I specifically get excited about new media. So um, uh, I was there when MTV, or I was got to be a part of MTV, tapping into celebrity unscripted television that created the Osbournes and Newlyweds, and um, I was part of the casting department. I created with Rod Asa the casting department in '99 that started casting talent in MTV films. Like we put Beyonce in her first film, we put Mandy Moore in her first film. Um, that was something that. You know, MTV wasn't doing with talent. So the idea of innovating talent and, and new media has always sort of, you know, super, super been attractive to me. Well, I think that in order to really launch a brand, launch a career, you actually have to have someone like you um, on your team to help you build a brand. Um, we've talked a little bit about what you do, but you probably put it best into your own words. So let's take a look. Yo, what's going on everybody? It's Vinny Potestivo and I hope all is well and that you are aliving and thriving wherever this video is catching you at. Uh, I am a casting director and a TV development executive turned CEO celebrity brand coach. I help people come up with business plans and content strategies that launch amazing brands, hopefully for years and years and years to come. And we get to do this for a very long time because that, that's the plan is to do this for a very long time. And one of the ways I wanna help you do that is by helping you differentiate your brand. And the best way I know how to do that is through content. So here are nine content strategies that I came up with to help you differentiate your brand. The first thing you should do is focus on content. You gotta highlight your value. You gotta have an opinion. Having an opinion is actually a very important thing. Having a fact-based opinion. You gotta turn questions into content. Google up some questions that your audience is looking up themselves and create content that answers those questions. Conduct surveys. If you wanna be seen as a thought leader in your industry, one of the best ways you can do it is to organize a survey, distribute it within your industry, collect that data, which you then own, and find ways to share that information, whether it's in a newsletter or a report. Breaking news. 
So if breaking news is part of your content strategy, I just want to give you a heads up that it can get pretty exhausting. And there's nothing more important that we've talked about today than analyze and strategize. Understand your audience so that you can differentiate the conversations that are out there and lean into what your audience is looking for, making you a more relevant partner in their life in a way to bring better value, more specific value to their life. And I can't think of a better way to enrich someone's life than giving them you know, what they want. Um, so that being said, maybe you want to drop a couple of questions for me below or you can DM me with yours if you have anything. But I would love to see how I can help you be successful in your brand adventure. And I appreciate you watching this. And thanks. <laughs> so as we talk about getting started uh, and seed planting, people are looking to build a brand. They're an entrepreneur, they have their own business and they're looking at this and saying, how do I, how do I get started? You mentioned a couple things I wanna focus on first is you mentioned focus on content. I assume that you mean a platform and how does someone go about creating like what even is going to be my platform? What's gonna be my content? Yeah. How does that get started? The, the content piece, it, I think for me, it's realizing that creators who make Instagram and TikTok and YouTube videos sometimes look at those as posts or as single assets, almost as a deliverable. And for casting directors, for executives, those deliverables are discoverables for you. And that's how we're meeting you a lot of times in the first for the, our first touch point, generally speaking, should, it probably is going to be content that you're making that allows us to go back and look at the rest of the content that you've made. So to be mindful of your content for me means, look, create, uh, so I've learned this the hard way, but creativity is certainly a, um, a, a muscle that needs discipline uh, and it needs discipline so that it can flourish in times where you need to be able to um, exert your energy and it needs to recharge in moments you know when, when when you really when you really need to so in terms of being mindful of your content i like helping people figure out uh, some people talk about niching down um, i talk about intersections um for me it's a little bit you know, because there's a, a loop in, mo in cycles in most people's lives or in professional careers so as long as I stay where I'm at, all everyone else who's, and I'm not saying it's around me, I'm just saying I'm part of that path, that that loop in that path. I stay in that path. That's my intersection. So they they know when they're around the sun. Whether so that's, as far as an individual, you're talking about their intersection? I would say their their intersection. What is the what is the content that they're creating? So, well, you know, I tried to stay away from some marketing terms, but I think creating in content buckets, establishing content buckets, understanding, you know, three or four topics that not only do you want to be known for, not only, you know, is this something that um, it's not a service, but it's ultimately, you know, um, when people are describing you in the room when you're not there, what they're saying, because they don't talk about your projects. They they talk about, you know, but how, I think how you think that's real. key. And if you're establishing a brand, you just talked about content buckets. And so to me, that that makes you more versatile for branding. Absolutely. I'm not just going to be able to talk about interior design. I can talk about lifestyle. Um, I could talk about um, uh, energy efficiency. I could talk about uh, brand building. I can even talk about being, you know, kind of a second career um, entrepreneur. I was a newscaster, then I became uh, an interior designer. But for me, it's very authentic. I'm not stretching. Um, so any question that tends to be posed to me in a live setting, on a show, uh, in an interview, I can answer because I'm true to that brand. I think that that may be even key to stay true to who you are. Don't try to be something that you're not, but you also may have the hurdle of, do people really care about what I have to say? And, and also, can I actually brand and monetize my platform? Yeah. Well, it's interesting to hear um to hear from you hear that because in our like we've we've been so as talent, we've not me, but like, we've been um hired for specific shows and categories. So in some ways, um, you know, the early part of our careers really helped shape um where we find comfort and and never let any of that imposter syndrome creep into our specialty because you know why we've been paid by big networks or brands before. So so it feels legitimate to us. But there's a lot of people out there, non-creative executives who've never 
you know, been hired for anything on camera for no purpose. They don't need to be other than like to push their message. So they've never had arrived to a studio. So their, their sense of get you know, getting their feet firm on the ground, um, uh, it feels like a stretch because, because they're rubbernecking. They're looking around with every, they're trying to get their, their GPSing, you know, trying to figure out, um, uh, where they are. Who they are. Yeah, that, that's why I like to work on the intersect uh, on intersections. So for me, you know, in communication, my intersection would be um, innovation and inspiration. I love new technology, not because it's shiny and new, but because attention is there, because people care about new things, um, because the stakes, if it's going to work or not, are you know are inherent. So there's already all these cool things tied up into the energy of new platforms. Um, the, I think that's why I loved working at MTV in the in the late '90s and 2000s because reality TV, unscripted television, like what I did with Carmen Electra and boy bands and girl bands and and casting Menudo. I mean, to to be able to create pop culture, you need eyeballs. To be able to impact culture, you need eyeballs. And and in 2007, when I felt like um, uh, uh, MTV's definition of talent was. A, was differentiating from what I was trying to do with the network. And I was trying, I was pitching shows that went on to other networks. I was pitching talent that I was told would never be famous that are extremely hyper A plus 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 famous. And um, I realized in 2007 that I could take my talent and go elsewhere. So I packed my bags and and, you, and, you're, and you're doing your own thing. Yeah. So let's talk about, um, I want to pick your brain a little bit more. When you talk about new and shiny. Um, yeah. What are the platforms that someone should be on? Because people have become, you know, TikTok stars and Instagram darlings. Educate us. Where where should someone? You mentioned Clubhouse before. I don't even know what oh, Clubhouse yeah. is. So can you I talk about some it. of the platforms that people should know about right now? And absolutely and, and be on. Uh not only have I already partnered um, with people um, that I've met or remet from uh, Clubhouse, um, uh, but I've also it's also completely changed my vocabulary um, and and what I do. So there's there's some hype on Clubhouse. Clubhouse is a live in in audio uh, in app audio streaming app. So uh, think of a social network uh, where you can have group calls and it could be um, thousands of people or dozens or single one on one or it could be one on one. It's strictly just audio and it's the opportunity to remove the video the photo the like all of the elements in social media that distract from the conversation and just listen to the voice and just be present and allow you to in real time stop the conversation and interject and um oh, it's, it's a group people these are group people talking um it, it it is it depends on the so there are rooms in clubhouse and and you can be a solo speaker it can be a panel it can be a q and a so they give you the option to create the room you know how how you seem fit but uh it's um it's a new platform that a, a lot of thought a lot of thought leaders are on right now and are giving away a lot the thousands of dollars of free video course and mastermind level insights because they're they're feverishly growing their audience on Clubhouse. Now, the unique thing about Clubhouse is, um, well, there's many unique things, um, and I, I believe the ability to um, to tip and to pay to enter a room is about to be launched. So that's something that the the Clubhouse founders are talking about. But it's one of those. If you're really looking for connection, if you're looking for community, I love it because it I, it connects to your phone. So I automatically have access to everyone I ever worked with. It's like walking through the halls again or meeting over at crafts. I'm never on set, but I'm always by craft services. <laughs> so the, or, or like in food. the makeup room. Yeah, right. <laughs> Vinny, I want to talk a little bit about um, getting noticed. So you're, yeah. you're mentioning Clubhouse. You know, we have TikTok, we have Twitter, we have Instagram, we have Facebook. Uh, back, let's say, in the as they say, in the day, I my main way of kind of getting my brand out was social media, but mostly YouTube. And I was honored to have been selected to be the interior designer on a, a tour with Oprah. And I was called the Life You Want Tour. And they found me uh, from YouTube. They found me from social media. So how important is it to be present on social media on a continuous basis, if you want to get noticed and you want to build a brand, 
Oh, imperative. And you hit the word consistency. Continue. You have to continuously, consistently keep posting. Um, I mean, every week I feel like I'm watching a late night show and there's a story about an artist who was just about to quit. And literally they send in the note and then the, someone, Jimmy Fallon, walks into a, 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 a store, hears the song and he's on the, the Tonight Show immediately. Um, uh, there are too many actors and too many hosts that I've seen with talent that I literally said in my twenties and uh, 20 years ago, when I said, I really can't wait. I can't wait for you to ca get cast. I am so sorry. We are not the network that's going to be like your first, but I know for a fact you will be like, like, I mean, there are so, so, so many hosts that, um, it takes, it takes time, um, uh, to really establish that presence, but also have ownership i don't know it just takes time so stamina is something that i've seen more than anything kill talent um the ability to 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 not double down or triple down um in your space hopefully creating content has gotten cheaper you know so maybe that might be something i hope that will keep great talent inspired to keep creating and around and, and publishing content because um 20 years ago it was hard to be on air talent if you weren't getting network bookings or cable bookings there, there were no digital dot com bookings you know really back then podcasts were not you know 2004 so like in the early 2000s podcasts weren't really you know there's no jobs there yet so um it I, I now it's ab absolutely key to be consistent and and when you talk about being on youtube um you know tiktok uh, uh linkedin in. Some people, for some reason, gloss over LinkedIn when um, it comes to posting content. But like, I promise you that network executives and their coordinators and managers that create these lists of talent and directors um, are all on LinkedIn looking for your reel and, and their next gig. So make it easy for them. Like, be discoverable. Help be where they're looking. And um, and that's the part I get passionate about. And that that's where consistency really will help you. Um, I mean, it takes no talent to be consistent other than showing up on time. And it, it used to drive me crazy, that quote. It's not my quote, it's someone else's. Uh, because I used to get so mad because I'm so passionate about people with talent rising through the ranks and and unique talent, tiny, tiny, sincere, like not loud, like super authentic talent that needs to be recognized, but isn't going to be if it's quickly passed through and casting to be developed and... Um, Let's talk I look at those about DJs that. on MTV. Yeah. Let's talk about that nurturing. Let's talk about that molding because, you know, not everyone, you know, kind of is a breakout from the beginning. Let us understand how you work with the brand, how you take, you know, a, a seed and plant it and watch it grow. Can you talk a little bit about how you work with people, how you... Yeah out that talent from start to finish someone meets you how does someone how do, how do you how does someone meet you how do you meet them and then what's the path from there yeah a majority of my clients um majority of my one-on-one -on -one clients that i'm working with now i've i've already i've known for years um i've i've successfully sold their shows or i in i unsuccessfully sold their shows but there was still the right story just the wrong time so maybe it's the right approach now um so a lot um uh I'm lucky to have a built-in, you know, client base of people that have been with me on my journey. So they know my really unique method of badness. Um, part of it is contacts, knowing who wants what. So I've got, you know, before you even get into the room, i am got my finger on the pulse and I'm talking to network executives and platform directors and I'm not waiting for the mandates to come out from you know, agencies or from um, conventions. Um, I don't, I, it's great to have those mandates. Those mandates that they come out with are basically like, here's a list of everything that it's too late to pitch because everyone now is going to be trying this. And everyone includes Brad Pitt, who has a reality TV production company and produced logo, Sp Spielberg. I mean, there are big producers now. So um, just, just, just to sort of point that out. So the first thing I do is just know about the opportunities, um, looking into what Roku is buying, what, what the digital streaming capabilities of a product could be and how I, I could license it. So I'm aware of the market before we sit down and say, so what do you want to create? <laughs> because if there's no audience, there's no show. Like a, a great idea does not make a show. A great audience makes a show a great show builds a community um and and it's it's that cycle that i've seen be be hyper truly successful so um 
I work with big name talent and brands that have um, hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, um, pumped into their ecosystem and their and dozens and dozens of people that are if not, if not hundreds of people um, that are working for them, if they're a celebrity or even if they're like a QVC or a Sephora brand. So I'm hyper aware that there is an established brand. You're, there's already gold. There's already magic here. So the first thing I do is be mindful not to rock the boat. I don't want to take away from the magic. I only want to be additive. Um, if the thing you do on Instagram is awesome about smelling candles and uh, you want to be the, the next candle influencer, I'm not coming in and saying you should launch a line of candles because that will cannibalize what your unique skill set is. So I'm very mindful of what not to do in the beginning. Um, the second thing is a lot of active listening. I mean, I ask questions as a, as a casting director. I've been trained to ask questions based on, you know, and, and really listen to the answer and then follow up to make sure I get my question, you know, answer that to, to mindful listening is a huge component to my development process. I have a very empathetic approach to nurturing talent because I, I understand and, and I'm aware of what you want to accomplish, what you believe you can accomplish. Um, and how you believe you want to get there. Um, I also become aware of um, how audiences perceive you. And the the almost overwhelming part about that for me now is that there are so many platforms, like for example, Instagram, that has six surfaces in. So how, how the audience interacts with me on IGTV is different than how they interact with me in IG feed. That's my casting background. You know, if I'm casting Housewives of Jersey or Millionaire Matchmaker or or any of the 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 uh, ensemble shows, you know, or, or or smaller shows that I've cast, I'm I'm stepping into someone else's community. I'm the guest, so I show up. You know, I, you don't know, but I show up with wine and I or cookies, and I have something to add. You know, I'm you, not showing you up. Woo, with you woo the, the the people who you want to get your your brands and your personalities in front of. Um, we're going to talk a bit more about your business and how you work as a celebrity brand coach. But first, cool. let's take a look at some of the celebrities that you've worked with. that I missed your birthday. I'm bummed that I couldn't be in New York for it, but you deserve to have a really special day. And um, I hope you didn't have to work too much and you get to have the best party. And um, I hope I can be there next year. Happy birthday. If you're turning 30, have a fabulous time. I'm laying out, it's about 60,000 degrees out here. I smell barbecue and I've been drinking something that I finished with a lemon in it. Have a good one, cheers. <laughs> Hey, hey Vinny, it's Happy Ali and Jay. Birthday. Happy birthday! Sorry we you couldn't rock. be there. Hope you're having you an rock. awesome party. Go crazy, have fun. We'll see you soon. <laughs> they are loving on you. Aww. I gotta tell you. Um, I wanna ask you, how do you know when you need a coach, a celebrity business coach such as yourself, a brand um, strategist, and what is the difference between what you do and an agent or a manager? Yeah. Um, uh, the second half of that question is a little easier for me because I think I do exactly what most people think agents and managers do. And I certainly have overlap with some managers in terms of the nurturing and the development on both sides, your your talent, your product and your services. So understanding what what are the ways that you can be not not really just only monetizing, but empowering your purpose and making sure that we're fulfilling like the original goal here, which generally speaking is not money. Money generally drives a greater purpose. And then on this side, I'm, I'm really mindful, you know, of um, of 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 those needs. So um, uh, you know, when you want a celebrity coach like myself, when you have something to offer, and you don't, I've never asked, I've never answered this question, but when you have something to offer, and you're not sure if you're effectively getting that message out or you're not sure if you're hitting your maximum potential in terms of like the gigs you're booking. I I'm working with um, 
I, I get to work with anchors. You know, a, a big part of my news of my casting background does stem from news. Um, and I, I did, I do get to say that I, I brought Suchin Pak and Gideon Yego and Brianna Keeler to MTV, who have be, uh, become, you know, um, Goliaths and in, in, in huge impactors. I want to go back just for a second oh, sure. about how you work differently than an agent or a manager. Sure. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Do yeah, you, absolutely. if we can, because a lot of people are thinking, you know, do I need you and an agent? Do I need you and an agent and a manager? Can you talk about just that process? Yeah, I, um, yeah, there's two ways that I work with agents and managers. I'm either the person you hire to make sure your, um, e your electronic press kit and your reels, that the content that you're working, the ideas, that the stamina, your muscle is ready. I'm the person that you hire to make sure everything is in place. And then I bring in agents and managers for you to meet. So a big part of my, what I do is, is team building, also publicists, um, copywriters, editors, whatever it is that your creative brand or non-creative brand needs, that I help you put those, those pieces together. The other way that I'm different um, than an agent or a manager is those people hire me to come in to put those pieces in place as well. Um, a manager has a fiduciary responsibility to have like a signed deal and a financial responsibility to um, procure, you know, for you. An agent's responsibility is strictly just to manage those manage relationships with the platforms and specifically with the platforms and products, and also negotiate. So agents aren't the people. If you are not represented or you're an up and coming talent and you haven't been represented, yet, agents aren't the people who are hired to help you get famous and meet producers and get into the networks. That's not what they do. Um, and if you find a manager who believes in you, who will not charge you for representation. So anyone who's making money from you should not be, I believe should not be charging, should be making money from you upfront, you know, as well, or make it recoupable. Um, uh, part of what I do is actually recoupable because I become a partner with um, my clients on on their businesses um, because it's it's more than the media. The media opens the door. The media gets us on the Today Show or GMA um, or Cheddar, you know, in a, in a recurring uh, manner. I want to um, talk about that, Vinny, really quickly, just because I want to stop. You talked about the money. Yeah. How does someone work with you? How how do you get paid? How does someone like you work? Sure. So uh, how I get paid, I'm a funny one. With how, I really don't like getting paid from the people I work with. I really, truly love creating and getting paid from platforms and distribution partners and, and getting a share in non-exclusive licensing or exclusive licensing. Um, I have deals with networks and platforms where I can bring them in talent-driven projects that do not have production companies attached to them. Um, it's a unique thing that I do personally in our, our TV industry as a talent executive um, to be able to bring in a show that doesn't have a production company attached to it so that the network can develop it with the talent and then collectively they pick the production company. Um, so the, the monetization part um, is so important to me um, because my goal, generally speaking, in content is to help leverage the opportunity to get even like I'm not looking. I'm generally speaking, the money we make from the TV show is not is not the cap. Isn't that that is not the or, or even the impact in the, the television show. The television show hopefully launches a real life events and it's uh, or podcast tours or, um, but but ownership of content. Um, and that's where I you go. I ask about being consistent. Ownership of content and making more content. All that allows you to be able to license and get paid for it. I also, um, to answer the question, uh, directly have one-on-one -on -one clients um, that I work with uh, for years. Uh, I, I haven't signed up too many new one-on-one -on -one clients, but if I, if I do and they're the right match for me, it would probably be like a three month window that we work together initially. I really like working in cycles because I really like repeating success. And that's, that's the challenge is doing it again and again. So if I can, format for you, you know, a social structure that allows you to have a really cohesive brand digitally, but also allows you to create webinars or masterminds uh, into a cycle. And then we can repeat that cycle. I think that's a really healthy way. You know, it's like going to the gym on routine. It's a really healthy way to be creating content. Well, of course, you're very selective because what you've just described uh, is, um, do you work on retainer? At, at, I at do. 
Okay, because if not, then you're you're really taking a chance on someone that they'll that they'll get you know a brand deal, and if they don't, then there's then you know there's there's nothing. And if you you're a business just like everyone else, so you're saying that you do have a, a retainer relationship as well. I do, I do. Okay, and so someone will put you on a retainer, and mm -hmm. then you work with them to help them reach their brand goals, essentially locally, nationally, and for some people globally. Yeah, or, or also sometimes redefine their brand goals. You know, they'll come in and say, I want to be a host. And I'm like, yeah, you want to show up to the studio at 5 a.m. every day and never talk about your projects and always answer to someone else and always ask someone else about, is that what you really want? Or do you, or do we need to like drop a book, a podcast, get the brand there and then reposition you? And, and by the way, experts are no longer, you know, it's the entrepreneurs who've risen through that expert, you know, um, mandate you know there's so many experts at the media and i think you know we they said well if you put your money where your mouth is so you'll see experts and no longer experts are now are real entrepreneurs who have money you know invested in in their expertise um you talked sure. earlier about the fact that it's less expensive to do content there was a certain point where you know if if you weren't on the today show or good morning america um if you weren't on some national platform it was almost you know considered you know not even a, a you know a, a, a worthwhile placement these days as you mentioned people can totally brand themselves using social media podcasts um, webinars. Uh, it is it is digital. And do you think that 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 really is where it at where it's at? Because when you have the digital platform, uh, you can really repurpose content in a different way than you could before. You don't have to necessarily be on that national show for that for that one off. And people are also creating a lot of content through some of the platforms that you mentioned: Roku, YouTube. There's so there's so much out there. Yeah, um, I have a client named Josh McBride who frequently was on Good Morning America uh, on the Today Show as a as a contributing producer or, or as a, a as a contributor in the lifestyle segments um, in the third or fourth hours. And um, we created and what he really did beautifully was simplify things. You know, here are the products to watch. Here are the, here are the products to look out for. Here are the shows to watch. And that's what he was getting booked for. We came up with a show called Simplified with Josh McBride, a two and a half minute to three minute show that answers trending pop culture questions with the use of pop culture content. Um, it's a YouTube series, it's two and a half minutes, super low lift, we shoot it in front of a green screen. And what that two and a half to three minute digital series has got allowed us to do is partner with news platforms like Cheddar or, or, or digitally and broadcast, Fox Houston, um, a celebrity page. There, there are um, platforms that are not only just repurposing his content. Uh, Josh has a spot, we'll see him weekly on Cheddar in the five o'clock hour and they, they, it's enter entertainment headline news and simplified with Josh McBride. Um, so, so the content really becomes so much more than just, you know, you in the room when you're not there, it allows, it, it, it it, add, it, it adds value. And that's where I say to focus on those deliverables and make sure they're discoverables. Make sure there's takeaway in what you're creating. If you're creating something for yourself, make sure it serves the audience. Um, the, I, the, there's audience that serves, audience that sell. I mean, there's content that serves, sells, and, and is shareable. If you're creating content yourself that you are financing, have it serve the audience. Those, those deliverable takeaways, those additive pieces of conversation that you're throwing into that content is going to be um, wh why you stick around and more importantly, why you come back. Well, because we are so thrilled to have you here because that's what we're about. The real, we are giving people useful information and content and, you know, it's working. And obviously what you're doing is working because you have so many celebrities that you've helped to launch their career so much so that they actually took the time to thank you. Breakthrough Female. And the best breakthrough female is Mandy Moore. I, I have a, a short list, though, of people that I would like to thank. My friends at MTV who have helped me so much, Rod Asa, and my best friend, Vinnie Potestivo. I love you. 
Hi, I'm Sujan Plath with MTV. Vinny gave me my first big break. Um, I was so nervous, in fact, with my MTV audition that I forgot to turn on my microphone. But thankfully, he saw past that. He saw my talent and my passion for what I do. And I've gone on to do everything from covering presidential elections to the VMA red carpet um, to TRL. And I've even gone on to produce and host my own television series on MTV called My Life Translated. And that's all because of Vinny. Clearly, the DNC needed professional help. Someone like Vinny Potestivo, who's cast reality shows like Millionaire Matchmaker, Pregnant in Heels, and that show where Jersey women try to throw tables at each other. Hey, what's up, guys? This is longtime host, TJ Lavin. I've been on MTV for years, and it's all because of one guy, Vinny Potestivo. I have no idea what he saw in me back in the day, but he was like, I like this BMX kid, and he came over here, we had some fun. He was like, this is my guy. So then years later, he's like, you want to host the show? And then sure enough, now I've been hosting the challenge ever since. I'm 14 seasons deep, which is more than a lot of hosts can say. I'm very excited. I love this guy. Oh, my Vinny, Vinny, Vinny. He is actually the reason I got my very first hosting job. I did some stuff for MTV because Vinny cast me, and uh, I had never had any hosting experience before, so he took a leap of faith and trusted me and hired me, and it turned out to be a really great outlet for me. I've hosted a bunch of different things now. He has a very good eye for talent. He has a Rolodex of people that he knows and believes in and has worked with. He started a lot of careers, and he's just incredibly talented. I want to talk about reality TV just one more time because uh, for me, I wouldn't have a national platform if it wasn't for that credit, that reality TV credit. I was doing local news for 20 years and you know that's, that's kind of a, a different path. But when I was cast on a reality show, there were casting directors, uh, there were HGTV uh, casting directors, and they picked me and 11 other designers out of 7,000 people who auditioned for Design Star Season 6. And that is a credit that I can use and do use over and over and over again. Kathy Hobbs, HGTV Design Star Season yeah. 6. And sure. um, I, wanna, I, I should. And I want to talk about, is that still um, something that someone should pursue and what is the best way to use a reality TV show experience? And the reason why I say that is because, you know, when you talk about the sea of people who have been on, mm -hmm. very few people, I'm talking about whatever reality show it is, very few people have really been able to spin it. And for me, and I'm, and I'm not a household name, I hired a publicist from the very beginning before the show even aired. And I kept that publicist in place for almost 10 years after being on being on the show. And she's still a part of my team. Um, what's your advice for someone as it relates to um, a launch using reality TV or digital or any sort of media as the springboard? Yeah, I will answer that question today as opposed to in the past how I might have answered that because... Um, part of it, part of my answer is to, it's to focus on retention and it's not about gaining followers. It's about getting people on a waiting list, on an email list, on a list that you have control over, you know, connecting them. It's getting people to your website. You know, it's training people to come find you. I think the future of where we're going in media, um, there will be, um, gateways to access our private content that we're creating. So I think in the future, it will be acceptable to pay a super small amount of money to creators who the same way we are okay paying cable and, and, and TV channels. So the first thing I want to say is, um, is is retention is be mindful of your audience. I'm laughing in my head because back in the day when people became VJs at MTV, the first piece of advice I would give them is go get sign up for frequent flyer miles because <laughs> you're going to want your family and your friends with you on this journey. Like go and we're going to send you places. So it's funny to hear me talk about 
in, in instinctively build the house, like protect the audience, have ownership over that conversation. Um, the second thing I would say is don't don't get distracted from the purpose. Like you didn't get cast on HGTV just because of your personality and your background and your backstory. It has it doesn't only have to do with everything that you currently are and were a lot of how they're casting in television now and for the last 10 years I tr and and every project I've ever cast but how, it's about what you can be doing in the future so the intent is so important and and talent intent you know that I talk about um the network wanting to know that this is going to happen with or without cameras because this is truly important to you um that's a real metric a real conversation that happens you know behind closed doors and I have to defend many people and relationships and businesses and and give play out scenarios based on um hints and flags that you know you sent to me um, well they, I, i'm curious because i i now want to get um I'm, I'm now really really curious you know kind of yeah. because give us an insider tip how are shows cast because they yes they had my background um but for example for design star there was this whole list of questions can you use power tools can you use um you know uh you know a power washer can you build something and i said no 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 i was cast the next day <laughs> I chemistry that they're looking they're fitting a niche. Do you not have, tell us how it works with casting. Do you have a type and you're literally looking to fit this, this, and this? How does it work? How does someone really get cast on a show? Because sometimes you wonder, how come I didn't get cast and wow, they chose them? Yeah, so so there's a couple of different formats I can briefly get to to answer that question. A real world is a great format to, to start off with because the format idea is very simple. Take seven people who don't necessarily have conflicting you know, paths in life, but they're certainly not parallels. Throw them in a room and see how they figure out. So the story engine there is conflict. So we're going to work them or they're going to drink a lot because they now have access to alcohol or so there's going to be things that happen in that show that um, exacerbate their personalities that bring out conflict because conflict drives and resolution, by the way. So conflict and resolution drives that show. If I'm casting an ensemble based show like Housewives or um, Osbournes, I'm looking for the story engines and relationships. So I'm looking at the Osbournes, if you look at it on paper, it goes like this. Every episode, here's where we pull the story beats from, from the husband and wife, Sharon and Ozzy, from the from the dad and family, from the Jack and Kelly, from Kel and the kids and mom. I can pull something. Something's going to happen in, those, in that dynamic all the time. It's a family. It's guaranteed to happen. Um, and that's where that's where I'm looking at um, uh, uh, choices that you're making. If I'm casting real world, I'm looking at archetypes. I mean, like legitimately breakfast club casting. He fits into this bucket. She fits into this bucket. And it was very sort of formulaic because the formula worked. I think we need more transparency and, and the audience needed more transparency. So I think that formula has dissolved. But I, it's, and it's funny that we call it a formula because it, it's all about chemistry. So if I promise you to your no, 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 no's, there was somebody else who said, yes, 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 yes. And, and it's that DNA of, of, and it's, it's like literally building the anatomy and, and DNA and structure. It's almost impossible to create um, level by level. You could only create it when it all comes together at once, right? It's not building slowly but it comes together as one cohesive unit that's chemistry um uh and then and then if you're looking if you're casting if you're trying to um appeal to a dating show um generally speaking uh it's about the first date it's all about the actions and the choices and decisions you will make on the first or second or third date little to do with chemistry interpersonal chemistry and more to do with the chemistry of the actual first date unless the show is called newlyweds and the idea is to follow a group of people throughout their first year of newlyweds or what we which i did on, on bravo and, and and also on mtv so um and those can story TV engines ruin, are can, family can, yeah can tv ruin a career can tv have the opposite effect can it can it hurt oh, yeah. your business yeah so not only can tv you know ruin or hurt your career and not only can it completely help and transform your career uh but the idea of almost being on television having a project in development and then something happening in the digital 
sphere that impacts because the you know community hears what's happening and and they're they're so um yeah ac our actions are publicly recorded uh 20 years ago they were only broadcast by networks and to be honest cable networks were kind of like poo-pooed cable networks because they weren't broadcast networks and now we're like cable networks and then there's like <laughs> digital networks but then those streaming networks are like oh yeah you're in a you're, streaming is great. Uh, streaming Netflix is, great. is like, mm -hmm, we'll see, guys. Pull, pull up a chair to our table. No, well, we there. have more. Let's, let's take a look at um, essentially your production reel. You've worked on so many shows. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Pretty impressive, my friend. Um, how does someone work with you? How does someone get uh, to be a client? Um, I want to be a that's client. Such a great, that. that is, oh, you that are that. awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, I love that. Well, working with people with integrity, working with people with purpose. Um, you mentioned earlier, like, what's the risk that I take in, in working with a client? I would rather take, I would rather not get paid and take a real risk to know that that my litmus test was true, that I really truly was focused on Im improving the talent piece and offering that you bring to the table. Because if I'm not translating that to the network buyers and the platform buyers, and I I'm not being effective you know, at my job. Um, uh, and the way I work with people is ridiculous now because um, it used to be to help talent, I could only work with talent and then I could only manage, I would try to manage the perception of that talent with manager. Now I hire editors and videographers um, on Clubhouse looking for creative. So I'm working with all of those physical production people and connecting them to my clients. So that's one way I get to work with people. Um, another way is a streaming platform. So a lot of streaming platforms have popped up. A lot of personal streaming platforms have popped up. And I want to use my network, the Verified Podcast Exchange, which is my group of clients' content. And I want to use that as an incubator to push out to all of those platforms. So if you have a digital streaming platform and are looking for content and you are have no money, I have content for you. It's going to be mine. I'll tell you that now. And then if you do have money, it's going to be my clients. I can tell you that now also. So, and, and it works and we make it together. So it's great content. And I also work on the distribution piece. So you're creating content. Someone can work with you and you can create the content. How does someone reach you? Can someone email you? Would you prefer them to contact you via social media? There are a lot of people who are watching right now who may want to reach out and 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 you may you may find an undiscovered star here. Oh, that's so why I'm doing this. Reach out to you, Vinny. That's like Come on. I'm so passionate about. Yeah. So uh, yo, it's Vinny on everything. So you know, Y O I T S V I N N I E. My direct email is hello at vpetalent.com is the best way to meet me. Um, I like working with people that I like being around, um, that I like creating with. Um, it's again, it's not about what you've done in the past. It's about the promise of what we could be doing in the future. And um, I, I would want that level of excitement um, uh, to translate and, and, and honestly, for purpose. Any final thoughts? that we have in the in the final the final moments that we have here. Yeah, uh it's it's about stamina, it's about creativity, it's about consistency. I love helping people and I will not charge people to work with them unless I really truly think that we can build something. I give my talent away for free because I want to be able to develop with people. Uh, I'm spending a lot of time on Clubhouse right now, um which again, if if you're interested in getting so Clubhouse is an invite only app. If you want the invite, then just hit you me up on me. my You invited me. I haven't looked at it yet, but you I, I sent you one. So <laughs> if you want, uh, but reach out to me and like, um, and also, so I do have a great team, but you work with me to be very clear. There's no handoff. So come say hi and like, let's get to know each other. And um, I would love to see how I can, you know, um, add energy to your world. I'm also super hyper curious about, you know, what we can do together, the promise of what we can create together. That's the piece that inspires me. 
Exactly. Well, Vinny, it has been so inspiring to have you here. Vinny Padestivo, everybody, thank you for being here. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. I'm interior designer Kathy Hobbs, owner of Kathy Hobbs Design Recipes, an interior design and home staging company based in New York City. And we'll see you next time. Bye, Vinny. <laughs>